Hey everybody, this is Mark, and I want to talk to you today about artificial intelligence. Probably machine learning is a better word for it. I mean, how intelligent is it? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. Now, I've done several videos already on AI. I've gone to loads of conferences, talked to a lot of experts about it, and most of what I've done so far is uh, share some, some information that I've shared at conferences, or I've talked about the relationship between students and teachers in terms of AI, but now I want to lay one out just for the students. Borrowing from some of those materials and adding a little bit more, I'm hoping that we can give you a picture of what I think really you should expect from artificial intelligence in the future. So let's do it. I said before, there's a lot to say about AI, um, and a lot of it actually, I think, is pretty positive. You know, we hear a lot about the dangers and about the sort of negative things that may happen with AI, but I think there's a lot of positive potential. It's an incredible tool. It's something that is being used a lot in industry, in business, and I think that any student that doesn't take it seriously, that doesn't learn how to use it or use it effectively or figure out how it is going to be used in the industry that they enter in is going to be at a disadvantage. It's current technology. I think you've got to know about it. And like I said, it has a lot of potential to do a lot of good things. All right, so you know what I'm going to do. I am actually going to use an AI tool when I'm done making this video to try to come up with a description of the video, to try to help me with tools that will improve my analytics. And of course, in the end, is it going to do me any good? Probably not. About six people will click on it in the end. So maybe AI isn't all that it's cracked up to be, but I use it too. I'm going to use it here. And maybe you should use it too. Sometimes. In some ways. There are also some important ethical issues to think about here too. First of all, there's the intellectual property question, right? I'm sure you're aware that artificial intelligence machines, if you will, gather massive amounts of data. Well, where do they get that data? Oftentimes it could be databases, but oftentimes it's just stuff off the internet. And so there's loads of things I put up on the internet. There are copyrighted providers that put stuff on the internet. Maybe you've put stuff on the internet. And what it does, it just sweeps up all this information and without attribution or permission, scrambles it up and reuses it again. And so there, there are some important questions, I think, about you know, how does someone get compensation or do these machines actually have a right to just go and gather this information freely without the express permission or authorization of those who provide the information in the first place? So, you know, this is sort of a new area, but I do think that you have to think a little bit about this, right? If you're using AI, you are borrowing information from people without their consent. And likewise, Others may be taking information from you without your consent. And so, like I said, that's probably the first major ethical question I think maybe that you have to wrestle with a little bit as you make this decision about what to do. I think a bigger question, really, and a more pressing question for students is how do you use it to help you in your education? And like I said, I think there are great uses potentially, right? If it helps you know how to use certain tools to gain certain information that would help you help you in a future career or business situation, I think that's absolutely fine. Um, there are, I think, ethical or useful ways maybe to use it in a classroom educational situation as well. For me, I don't think that there's a problem with students having a conversation with an AI bot, for example. Let's say that you've got a project and you're not sure what to do with it, and you type in the AI machine, you know, what ideas do you have for a project like this? And it may offer you some ideas. I think that that kind of brainstorming is perhaps a good thing. Or to say, here's some things that I thought about. Are there any, is there anything I'm missing? Are there any other things that we should look at? And I think that, you know, using it sort of in the same way as you would use an internet search engine, or in the same way as you would use something like basic, like Wikipedia, I think that that's potentially okay. A lot of people have talked about citing AI as your source, like chat GPT or, or whatever that is. And there are ways, of course, to cite it. I'm a bit agnostic about citation, to be honest. 
it's my view that you shouldn't be copying and pasting stuff from an AI source anyway. And I'm not sure that you should be using that source as an absolute authority. Let's say that you're asking a question like, you know, there, there's some project that you're working on and it gives you some answers, some ideas, right? Well, what I would do is rather than trust the AI for that information, I would probably use that as a springboard to do research from other sources and then cite those sources rather than, oh, hey, I'm, tr I'm citing this AI. You should trust it as a source. So students, I'm going to give you a word of advice, priceless advice, and that is AI is not that good, at least not that good yet. And there are huge validity problems. So I'll just tell you from my experience, looking at a lot of papers, a lot of times I can tell if a paper is generated by AI because the information is just wrong. I don't know if you've tried using Google's, you, you, you Google something and then up at the top, it sort of has this AI generated answer and you click on it and then sometimes it's partially right, but it's not completely right. Well, all of the AI search engines that you're using, the generators that you're using, are doing the same kind of thing. They're gathering a lot of different information from a lot of different sources, and a lot of times they can't discern what is right or wrong or true or false. To make things even worse, when you're asking them to do something, they don't necessarily know if you want accurate information or inaccurate information. So not only can they not find it, but if you want it badly enough, they will make it up for you because the, the purpose of the AI is to answer your question and solve your problem. And those parameters aren't really built into that machine very well. And so you may run into some huge problems just in terms of your paper being stupid because it's just not working the way you think it's going to work. When I talk to a number of these AI gurus, the people who are really pushing it and, and saying it's a really good tool and all this stuff, I've gone to some of these conferences, consistently what I hear is that with AI, you have to assume that it's a garbage in, garbage out model. I don't know if you're familiar with this or not, but the idea basically is that you're only gonna get out of it as good as what you put into it. So if you don't give it very good prompts, very good directions, then what you're gonna get is junk. So what you need to do is improve the kind of input that you put in in order to try to improve what's coming out. So hear me out here for a second. I did a, a presentation on student engagement a couple of weeks in front of the faculty, a couple of weeks ago. And I used just a regular Google to ask a simple question. And you know how nowadays, Google, the first thing that pops up is the AI answer, right? So this was my question. What's an average human attention span, right? Because with student engagement, I want them to sort of like get an idea of like, how long can students really hang in before they need to shift activities, right? Is there sort of an average? You know, I'm just curious. I'm looking this stuff up. So Google's answer, and by the way, this is first in the AI section, is 8.25 seconds less than a goldfish at nine. <laughs> So, is this true? I don't know, it seemed a little far-fetched to me, like less than a goldfish, I don't know. I mean, like, I have two daughters and they can sit down and focus at something for a very, 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 very long time. I know they're super bright, they're my kids, right? Hey. But like, I know people who can actually sit down and do something for more than 8.25 seconds. How would any of us get anything done if this were true? So then I go down the page and it references, I mean, this is the regular section, not the AI section, but all of its references were a study that said that this was true. The entire page, there was nothing to the contrary. So then I was like, okay, Google, is human attention span really less than a goldfish? That was my question. And its answer was, it's a myth. The group that did the study has a questionable reputation. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't have known if I didn't ask, are you really sure about this? And all the results on the first page treated that study as if it was true, 100% true. Why? Well, probably because people would share it over and over and over again. The search engine optimization, it picks it up, and it becomes the first result on the page. And so the truth doesn't even get out. 
And that was just a simple Google search. This wasn't me using any fancy AI or anything like that, although Google AI is probably as good as the rest, probably better. Even when I go to the references, which you always ought to do if you see that little AI thing at the top, the references were horrible. I had to ask the question differently in order to get the truth. Am I the one putting the garbage in? We'll turn it around backwards here, right? I think that the problem isn't me, and only the problem is the students. I think that there's more going on than this, and that the garbage that's coming in isn't coming from us. If I'm looking for good information on certain topics, I'm subject to the garbage that the internet produces, right? It's not garbage in, garbage out on my side, it's garbage in, garbage out on the general, overall, public user side. And that's, that's a difficult thing if you're trying to use ChatGPT for something that is like academic. Where are you if you don't have information that's accurate? Students, if they make style recommendations, if you're using it to try to maybe proofread your paper, just treat them as recommendations. Like I said, AI is not super great at fixing lots of things. Sometimes, I mean, even if you use something like Grammarly that relies on AI, which I've checked out before, sometimes their recommendations are really great, and sometimes they don't exactly make sense. It's really awkward and stupid and weird and backward. And so, you know, just simply trusting that this, this machine is going to solve your problem for you is probably, like I said, it's a tool, but it's not something you can absolutely count on. I think that you should probably go to more than one source. And maybe even if you're not the best writer, try to find somebody who's in your class or somebody you know who is a good writer. Have them look over it. I mean, that old fashioned way of just trying to, to find a team and, and work together and, and, and that kind of thing. I think that works a lot better than just sort of like saying Grammarly says so or ChatGPT says so. So therefore, you know, it, it is. And that also is going to prevent uh, false positives from popping up if anyone using, is using an AI detection software program, which there are a lot of those around. And they're somewhat useful as far as figuring out whether or not someone really has engaged in acts of academic integrity violations by using AI. But I think the bigger question really is how much work do you want AI to do for you? And I think if you're being honest with yourself, you have to ask yourself, why are you pursuing an education? If my purpose really is just to get that piece of paper, that diploma that says, hey, I graduated, and use that as evidence to show some potential employer that you finished something, and that's your access point to get into a job, then, you know, the education itself is secondary to the outcome. And I know a lot of people think that way. It's like, all I need to do is go to college or I need to get a grad degree. Once I get that degree, then it'll open all sorts of doors for me. And, and the truth is it will. You know, someone who gets a college degree statistically is going to make a whole lot more money than somebody who doesn't have one. Somebody who has a grad degree statistically is going to make more than somebody who, who doesn't have the grad degree, right? And the higher up you go, the more money you're going to make. And so that makes it very lucrative. It makes it very attractive. But I think that's a dangerous line if that's sort of where you're going, because there are ways that you could use chat GPT to get that piece of paper and short circuit the whole process. I'm sure you're familiar with this, right? If I took a prompt that a professor offers me and says, hey, and basically copied and pasted that thing and stuck it into chat GPT or an equivalent AI machine, you know, I might get what looks like a really nice looking paper and I can turn that paper in. And it may or may not do well, but you know, who knows if the professor doesn't check, if you, know, you can otherwise get away with it, then maybe you'll get a C paper, maybe even a B paper or something like that. You can skate on through and not learn anything. Get your piece of paper, try to make your access. The problem is at that point, then you have to kind of scam the rest of your way through your existence because there will come a time where somebody who really is an expert expects you to be able to do something that that piece of paper implies that you're able to do. And if you can't, then you have failed yourself in that process. And so my recommendation is 
don't use AI that way, right? The more you use your own brain power or the more you use AI as a research tool as opposed to something that's going to do your work for you, then the more you're going to get out of the experience and the more likely you are to be successful and valuable to a future employer, to your family, to your community, and so on. And so you become a better version of yourself. So, um, and, and really it's, it's kind of a, a position of honesty. It's kind of, you know, you're, you're doing the right thing just because it's the right thing to do. Um, is it possible to get away with that sort of stuff? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's possible. It, is it okay? Well, ethically, it's probably not. And from a, a self experience, you really are cheating yourself out of that experience. We are still in early stages as far as trying to figure out what to do with AI and the best way to approach it. So anything I say today could be obsolete tomorrow. I'm sure it's probably going to be obsolete in another year or two, but I still think these are issues that are worth discussing. Students, I would challenge you to do the right thing. Get the most out of your education. Don't use AI to cut corners. Use it as a good tool as technology, something that might help you in your career in the future, something that might help you generate ideas, something that is, you know, shouldn't be trusted 100%, a starting point on research, but definitely not an ending point.